It's important to recognize what makes you happy. Cherish what you have right now. I learned that sometimes it's just best to listen. I realized what I wanted to do as a career. I know how to balance my time and energy. Change can be good. Hey, Storm Nation. Welcome to Bolt 2021. Stepping out of the storm. Hey everyone, welcome to Bolt 2021. We are so excited to have you here. I'm Mary Juni here at Skyview and I'm really excited to introduce our performers that we have for this week of Bolt. Bolt is an event that leadership puts on every single year which showcases the unique talents, experiences, and dreams that the Skyview community has. This year, our leadership class has decided to make our theme surrounding the chaos that we've endured throughout the last year. With that, our theme is stepping out of the storm, and it's all about figuring out who we are and joining together to help others in times of need. Our leadership class has spent so much time putting this together, and it's been challenging making everything online and collaborating completely through Zoom, but we are really proud that we have been able to put this on, and we're really happy with our work. So with that, let's introduce our first presenter, Liam Smith, doing a speech. Hey everyone, I'm Liam, for those of you who don't know me. And for those of you who don't know me further than just my name, I am really into music. Well, the more that I tell her, I'm not staying over. The I wasn't recording the whole time. As a kid, I always loved music, like most of us probably do. Um, but I started making my own music when I was 11 on an ancient device called a Tascam Porta Studio. Yeah, it looks confusing, and it was. Uh, I used that for years and before I got a computer in around 8th grade, but I made so many songs on that and I still don't understand 80% of what it actually does. And growing up, my influences from music were like alternative bands. So like, for example, like Smashing Pumpkins or like Perfect Circle. And a lot of the music was very dark. Uh, and you can probably tell by listening to one of those old songs. And even though that music sounds dark, I was actually really happy at that time and I was really happy making that music. I'd come home from school every day and start recording or writing something or have an idea and just playing. And as a little seventh grader, I was like, damn, this is, this is kinda good. But um, looking back, there was never a structure to the song, it was just like an idea, and I Frankensteined it together. But it was actually, it was cool looking back. Um, I would sell my albums, my finished albums, to my classmates' parents, and I'd make money off of it, and I'd be like, sick, I'm gonna keep doing this. But the thing is, through all those years, I taught myself, I produced myself, I recorded myself, I learned how to mix, uh, I made my own album artwork, when previously I was under the notion that I needed studio time, schooling, tons of Benjamins, and just everything that I didn't have as a kid. And I feel like a lot of people today are under that notion, when it just simply isn't true. And I'm not just talking about music, either. I'm talking about making movies, or painting, or drawing, or whatever craft you feel like you want to do. Uh, for, so like, paint, if you want to paint or you want to draw, 
You don't need the $50 pens that are behind the glass case at Craft Warehouse. Just, you know, grab your number two pencil, grab your paper, and start drawing. Or if you want to make movies, uh, take your phone out, start writing a script, start making a story. Or say like your parents have an old Super 8, grab that and just do it. What I'm trying to say is that don't let the things that you don't have or the things that you think you need to have prevent you from doing what you want to do. As a kid, before I had a drum set or before I had my guitar, pretty cool. Uh, I would be in the back of my parents' car listening to what's on the radio and thinking I'm playing it at a packed out Moda Center show. And I loved it so much. I, I would go home, steal my mom's old Mac laptop, and go on GarageBand and just hit random buttons. I didn't know I was making music, but I was like, sounds like, sounds like the stuff that's on the radio. This sounds like music. I wanted to do it so bad. And I did it with what I had. And do this for yourself. It's very appealing nowadays to be in the video that has millions of views. Or be on all the late night shows. Believe me, I know. I think about being on Jimmy Fallon all the time. But never should that be what makes you want to do it. If you have the passion in your heart, the thing that runs the show, and that flame is never going to go away. If you love doing what you do, and you're happy about it, then you can do it forever, and you'll always want to do it. And just so we're clear, I'm not clean of my fair share of self-doubt. I haven't made a song that I like in seven months about, and every day of those seven months, I've woken up and said, I'm going to make this, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna make a song, I'm gonna work on it all day, and I'm gonna get something done. In nine out of ten of those days, nothing happens. And a lot of people would see that as a failure. And even myself, for so long, thought, I failed. I keep trying to do stuff and I keep not having anything done. But it truly is an accomplishment. If you wake up and you set your goals to do something, you say, I want to do this. That's already a win. You woke up and you devoted your passion to what you're going to do. And so what if you don't get something done? You spent all day and you, maybe even an hour, you spent that time working on what you wanted to do and practicing your craft and practicing what you want to do. I know it's hard not to give up sometimes. I've been so close to saying, you know what? I'm done with music, dude. It's just not happening. It's, it, it's stupid, but it's not right because it's what I love to do. If you keep doing that and you don't stop, then soon one day you'll, you'll finish something and you'll say, I think I'm onto something. And the rest just falls into place. So the message I'm trying to say today, if I didn't make it clear enough, do what you want to do, keep doing it, nothing should stop you. Not money, not people, not the thoughts in your head, not the things that you have. You should just keep doing it if it's what you feel in here. So thank you for watching, love you guys, have a good day. Bolt 2021. Awesome. Thank you, Liam. Next up, we have Nicole Morelli singing a song. Hi, my name is Nicole Morelli. I'm a junior at Skyview. Um, this is my second year doing Bolt. Um, today, I'm going to be singing She Used to Be Mine from the musical Waitress. I chose a song because during quarantine, I really wanted to improve on my singing. And this song was um, my top three of songs that I would sing in the car with my friends just to kind of boost up my confidence and improve all of that. So I really hope you guys enjoy and stay safe. It's not simple to say that most days I don't recognize me 
that these shoes and this apron that place and its patrons have taken more than I gave them. It's not easy to know I'm not anything like I used to be, although it's true I was never attention sweet center. I still remember that girl. She isn't perfect, but she tries. She is good, but she lies. She is hard on herself. She is broken and won't ask for help. She is messy, but she is kind. She is lonely most of the time. She is always mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. And it's not what I asked for. Sometimes life just slips in through a back door and carves out a person and makes you believe it's all true. But now I got you. You're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending or two. Great, Nicole. Next up, we have Zachary Brigello doing a speech. Hi, this is as my story about a journey that I had with having epilepsy during a big pandemic. My name is Zachary Dama Jr. here at Skyview. So COVID-19 caused the a lot of chaos around the world. It changed a ton of things because so I, there were some activities that I was able to do virtually while there were some other ones that I could not do virtually. How I, now how I started to step out of this storm, version 1.0 COVID-19 edition is I kept doing my best in remote learning by 
like figuring out a way to keep myself organized at maintaining a positive attitude. The, and then also I practiced, I was practicing like magic tricks because magic tricks is one of my favorite hobbies to show people because they're always impressed. Also, I did my martial arts classes had to switch over to Zoom, but I was still able to be able to practice my martial arts class. It's a skill to stay strong. Also, I took my two dogs for walks every day with my family and just played family games together at the house. Then the storm got upgraded to version 1.1. When on July 2020, I had my very first seizure that I was unaware of. Because when I woke up, I there were paramedics right by me putting like an IV thing on in onto my arm. And then I had to go to the emergency room in an ambience, which was scary at first, but then the paramedic helped me feel less scared. I started to step out of the storm 1.1 as I let my body rest and recover. Then I got some answers about what my seizure may have been caused by me. When I got an EEG and I saw a new warrior chest. And then after that, I my neurologist had to diagnose me with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. So then I had to start taking medication, but I had to do liquid at that time because I have never known how to swallow pills. Some glitches that happened during Storm 1.1 is I had to stop driving. When I went out swimming, I had to be supervised and wear a yacht jacket. Also, I, had, I just had to be careful of campfires and open flames. And then the storm got upgraded to version 1.2. When on October 23rd, I had my second seizure. And it was a weird day because it was almost time for me to be able to to drive again. But then that second seizure caused an extension on my no driving period. I started to step out of the storm 1.2 as I let my body rest and recover. And then my doctor increased the dosage for my medication to try to figure out what the cause of that second seizure may have been. Also, I just kept maintaining a positive attitude. I continued to do my best during remote learning. And then I also wanted to learn how to swallow pills. So I had an appointment with a speech teacher so it showed me like a diagram and description of the mouth that process of swallowing. And then after a day or two, I felt way more confident on swallowing pills so that I switched my medication over to tablets. I also participated in a virtual ball game, special in Washington, specifically in basketball. And it was just a fun way to keep myself positive. Also, I earned my black belt for martial arts. So that was one of my biggest goals I achieved during this big storm. And so when my belt got tied onto my waist with that black 
I just felt super proud of myself after eight years of hard work and dedication and commitment. Also, I created a yoga career at Skyview because I wanted to share my passion and make people learn how to do yoga tricks such as these ones here. And then here's what worked for me on stepping out of the storm. I came, I created this acronym ADS. Ask for help, don't give up, and stay positive. Thanks for listening to the story about my journey with epilepsy during that big pandemic. Thank you, Zachary. Lastly, we have Dylan Walker playing a song on the guitar. That was an amazing performance, Dylan, and that wraps our first week of Bolt. Please tune in the next few weeks of April to watch the rest of our amazing performers, and we thank you for watching.